Good morning, everybody. This is Pastor Bonnie. Usually I do um, painting lessons, but the Lord put something on my heart. It's actually been on my heart for a couple weeks, and I'm actually in my car. We had a wonderful church service, but my husband's teaching second service, so I caught a nap and spent some time in prayer. And, and um, so anyway, please disregard my setting. Normally I would try to do it at home, but I thought I'll take advantage of the quiet time. So he put on my heart that I have this new book came out, and this is the book. It's called The Way of the Seer, and it's your guide to experiencing healing, intimacy with the Lord, and the spiritual realm for yourself. So while I was waiting for my husband, I actually did the lesson myself in the book, and it's just so profound, and I really felt like he wants to talk to your heart about some things in your life. So what I'm going to do, I would like to share the lesson that I did today and just be be um, authentic and real with you and share what God put on my heart. And I believe that he wants to talk to you today specifically. And for those of you who um, subscribe to my channel for the art lessons, I have another painting that I'll be doing this week, and I can't wait to share that with you. And for those of you who just need prayer or you need an encouragement, I believe that this is for you today. If you decide you want to purchase the book, I do have a special running on my Etsy site. If you purchase the book, you'll get a free leather wrap bracelet, and that's a great value. Those are I saw those for $40 a piece. But the Lord just put it on my heart to give you something special and a hug from my heart to yours. So I'll put that in the description box. It's also available on Amazon. If you buy it on Amazon, just let me know. And um, if you send me your address, I'll send you your bracelet too. Because I want everybody to be blessed. So the name of this one, I'm going to read it to you. The name of this one is, it's actually chapter 17 in the book. And I just did it this morning. It's Abigail is the title. The scripture is, take delight in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart. This is one of my personal all-time favorite scripture passages and I have found it to be so true throughout these many years that I have personally known the Lord. This passage says that when we take delight in the Lord, he will give us the desires of our hearts. It doesn't say he might, it says he will. Isn't that the coolest thing to think that God wants you to have the de desires of your heart? How, how does one take delight in the Lord, you might ask? There are many ways that are mentioned in the Bible. One way is to spend time with God in prayer. Jesus himself would often go away alone and spend all night in prayer and ask God to tell him what miracles to perform the next day. It might surprise you in that the Bible says he did nothing of himself without checking first with the Father to see what his will was in the matter. Jesus was so surrendered to the Father that he wanted to hear his voice. So he spent all night in prayer. And here's the scripture. It says, I can do nothing on my own initiative. As I hear, I judge, and my judgment is just because I do not seek my own will, but the will of him who sent me. If you look at the lives of the great men and women of God, prayer was the top of their list. Here's a passage in Exodus where Moses went to Mount Sinai to get the Ten Commandments from God the Father. Exactly two months after the Israelites left Egypt, they arrived in the wilderness of Sinai. After breaking camp at Raphidim, they came up to the wilderness of Sinai and set up camp there at the base of Mount Sinai. Then Moses climbed the mountain to appear before God. The Lord called to him from the mountain and said, Give these instructions to the family of Jacob. Announce it to the descendants of Israel. You have seen what I did to the Egyptians. You know how I carried you on eagle's wings and brought you to myself. Now, if you will obey me and keep my covenant, you will be my own special treasure from among all the peoples on the earth. For all the earth belongs to me, and you will be my kingdom of priests, my holy nation. This is the message you must give to the people of Israel. Exodus 19, verse 1 through 6. Moses climbed the mountain like he was directed to do to seek time alone with God. He got away from the distractions of leading the people of Israel with all of their complaints and problems. He got away from the demands of his family and he was determined to listen only to the voice of God. 
It was during this alone time that God actually gave him very clear and specific directions as to what to say and who to say it to. This implies that we can have a personal, intimate relationship with God, and this type of relationship also implies a deep friendship with Him. Someone who wants to become this type of friend to God the Father must value His presence above all else. And that's hard to do, and I know, you guys, I struggle with it myself, so believe me, I'm not sharing anything with you that I'm not struggling with. And so one thing I've learned is... God, in his great mercy and love, looks at our hearts. He knows all the demands he has on us, and he tells us, Do not despise these small beginnings, for the Lord rejoices to see the work begin. Zechariah 4.10 um, You know, it's just the coolest thing. You might not have a lot of time to spend in prayer. You might not have all night. Uh, and I will tell you, I actually started doing this myself a few years ago. I set the timer on my clock for 15 minutes and I would walk up and down the hall. And you know, when I first started doing that, it was awful. I started thinking about all the chores that needed to be done, all the distractions, the dog had to go out, the phone would ring, and it, it was really tough to get through 15 minutes. But you know what? I decided to stick it out because I wanted to be a friend with God. I wanted to hear his voice in my life. So as time went on, I, so it was pretty easy. What I did in the beginning is I would just start at the top of the list and I would pray for my family members. So I would pray for my husband, go down the list for all the kids and all the grandkids. And then next thing you know... I'd set the timer for another 15 minutes, and then I'd start praying for the YouTube people and world events. And you know what? It's so exciting because we are not limited in prayer. We can pray for peoples and nations and kingdoms and situations, people who will never know us. It's just really powerful. And so sometimes the other thing that I like to do is I'll open up the Bible and I'll quote scriptures over situations. And we're actually going to go through that in the book, and I'll show you. But... All of a sudden, I began to recognize the whisper of the voice of the Lord. He started speaking to me about clear and specific things in my life. And so, and I've kept journals over the years, and it was amazing. I would be writing about whatever was on my heart and go back and read the journals a year later and find out that God was actively involved in those things. So, it, I just talked on about... Um, the story, and I, I'm going to read some of it. Some of it I'll talk to you about. So I said, here's what I said. Um, I still set the timer, but often it goes another 15 minutes and then another. And before I know it, I have spent two glorious hours in the presence of the Lord. I tell him all that is on my heart, and then I just listen. It is the sweetest, most precious time of the day, and I have learned that the name of Jesus truly is the most powerful name there is. I wield the sword of the Spirit by speaking God's word in the name of Jesus, and battles are waged not only for myself and my loved ones, but for kingdoms and people I will never meet in this lifetime. Prayer is not limited to my finite mind. That is truly extraordinary when you ponder it, and it really is. So this particular day that I'm getting ready to tell you about, I had decided rather than walk up down the hall, I was going to walk around the block and enjoy the fresh air. So this particular day, and you know, like I told you, it comes from practice. So I just felt like I wanted to be with the Lord. I got outside and I was walking around the block and I started doing the same thing, praying out loud, praying for my family members. And my daughter, Sarah, just found out that she was pregnant. And it was the coolest thing because I actually heard inside my spirit, there's going to be a baby girl and her name is going to be Abigail. And I just felt the presence of the Lord and he just literally dropped it in my spirit. So I didn't say anything to my daughter because I didn't want to influence their name. And I did tell them that the Lord told me they were going to have a girl. And and I will tell you, I don't take myself too seriously. Sometimes I hear the Lord and I'm accurate. Sometimes I don't. And it takes practice to hear the voice of the Lord. So sometimes I get it and it's right on the money. And sometimes I totally missed it. And sometimes if I mess up, we laugh and just go on. So in this situation, I did tell the Lord that I felt like they were going to have a girl. I did not tell them the name. 
because I felt like that was for God to show them. So the time went on, and sure enough, my daughter had a baby girl, and they did choose the name Abigail for her. Isn't that just the coolest thing? And so, you know, it's just amazing how God is so close to us and so very real and precious. And I just, I want to encourage you, start little. Just take a few minutes every day. And if you don't know the Lord, he, and you know, I want to say this to you guys. This has nothing to do with religion or what church you go to. It's about a personal relationship with Jesus. And I will tell you, I met him when I was 16 years old. And it was the most profound and real thing in my life. So, so if you don't know the Lord, all you have to do is say this simple prayer. Dear Jesus, I ask you to forgive me. I ask you to make yourself real to me. I believe that you are the Son of God and that you raised from the dead on the third day. And I believe that by your blood, I am totally forgiven and made new. And I ask you into my heart, in Jesus' name, amen. That's it. That's how simple it is. And then I encourage you, find a YouTube ministry to listen to. Go to church someplace. Talk to your friends. Read your Bible. You'll be surprised it will become alive. And then the next part in the book, and I'll show you what it looks like. So you can see, this one was mine from today. So every day in the book, there's a story to read. And then there's a prayer to write down. And I always put a scripture with it. So what you do is you write down what your prayer is and then you find a scripture to stand on and then you say it out loud because the Bible says faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So my prayer today was, I said, dear Lord, just like Jesus, I want to spend alone time with you and accurately discern your voice. May my heart's desires be yours. Show me, Lord, open my eyes and let me clearly see. And the scripture that I'm standing on, and even me, you guys, after all these years, I'm still searching and asking God, what is your plan and your purpose for me? And I have this dream in my heart. I have a, a little um, Etsy shop called the Father's Market. And my dream is to get a house someplace and have a little barn on it and fix it up and put a classroom in it. And, and I want to make it so other people can sell things in there and be blessed too. And I just want it to be a place where people can gather. I see a wood stove in there and I see benches and tables and I want to put homemade pies and and wonderful coffee and homemade soups and just let people have a place where they can spend time and, and rest and buy pretty things and that's what's on my heart. So in the natural, it's impossible without a large influx of cash. We live in New Hampshire. I love living here, but it's if you looked in the natural, it's very hard to live here because we have severe winters. The wages are not very high and and the housing is very limited, so it's very expensive. So all in the natural, I'm like, Lord, is this your desire for me? Is this what you have for me? And that's what I've been seeking the Lord. And so the scripture that I'm standing on that I wrote in the bottom of the margin is, Take delight in the Lord, and he will give you the desires of your heart. And that's Proverbs 3, 6. So just like you, I'm... I am finding things to stand on. So I just want to encourage you, pause the video, get out a piece of paper, and write down what is your prayer? What is your heart's desire? What is the thing that God's speaking to you? And I promise you, He will speak to you. And then the next part in the book is a journal entry. And I'll show you what it looks like. And um, this one, so sometimes I close my eyes and I just write what I see and I will tell you the Lord actually takes me up into heaven and shows me the most incredible things and actually there's stories about that in the later end of the book um, it talks about that I've actually seen angels so I wrote about that those stories are in the book too so my journal entry and it was the coolest thing because the pastor just preached about the very same thing and I did not know that I was going to read this today because it was just the next one on the list. You know, I start at the beginning of the book, work my way through and the pastor in the church just preached about how Jesus himself would spend time alone with God. 
And so my journal entry was, today the message spoke directly to my heart about taking care of myself as a priority and spending time alone with the Lord just like Jesus himself did. I am starting to long for my dream of the Father's Market. Again, how, where, when, if. Is this my desire or is it God's? It almost feels just like it did when I wanted another baby and God made the, the most impossible thing possible. And I'll share with you what happened was my husband and I had three children. I had lost a baby, had a miscarriage. And then, so I had two boys, uh, two, let's see, I had two boys and a girl. So I had my tubes tied. I was a nurse, registered nurse, had this great career. The kids were all in school. Um, everything was going really well. Well, I started to have this uneasiness in my spirit. I wanted another baby and it didn't make any sense because I had my tubes tied. It was impossible, medically impossible. I could not shake this feeling that there was supposed to be another person part of our family. So I started praying and seeking the Lord and it's that same feeling I'm feeling again about the father's market. And so I, um, I said, Lord, this is impossible. So you have to speak to my husband's heart. So the cool part was about three years later, it took three years worth of praying and seeking the Lord. My husband came home. He had been in the park with the three kids, and he said they were all on a swing. He saw this empty swing, and the Lord said, there's somebody missing from your family. And I said, I told you. So we went to the doctors. I had, it was a $10,000 elective surgery. Now my daughter's 25, so you can imagine 25 years ago how much money that was. So. So I said, Lord, if this is you, you're going to have to provide the money. He did. The insurance paid for the whole entire surgery. And then, um, so it was an elective surgery. I had my tubes untied. One month after I had the surgery done, I was pregnant with my daughter. And such a blessing, you know? So God can do the most impossible things. He can put the biggest dreams on your heart and make a way for them. And then the last part of what I want to share is, a, it's, I call it a devotional. It's really a prophetic word from the Lord. It's a, I saw a vision of myself one time, and there was an angel standing behind me, and I, I was just writing what I heard. So I give God the credit for these. They're, um, I call them angel songs because I did not write them. But the one today is, God is my shield. Keep your heart true and right before me, for it is in this place that I can shield and protect you. Guard your heart with the purity of my word and my power to cleanse you on the inside white as snow. You cannot do this in your own strength. You must do it in mine. All you have to do is ask, and I will instantly forgive and cleanse and make you new. And the scripture is, God is my shield, saving who's saving whose hearts are true and right psalm 710 and that's all it is you guys and i'll show you the book again so you can see the picture um i just felt like the lord wants to speak to you so i'd encourage you get out a piece of paper and write a journal entry write what's on your heart what you think what you feel write out a find a scripture and write, say, Dear Lord, and ask and tell him what you're praying about and find a scripture to stand on it. And the stories are just so powerful, you guys. And I'm, I, I really feel like that this book will encourage you. God wants to show you specific things. So I just trust. And, and like I said, if you don't have the money to buy the book, just, just get a journal. They're cheap. You can write a journal, write your prayer requests in it write down what you're thinking and feeling the lord wants to show you clear and specific things in your life he loves you so much you are so precious to him and if any of you have any prayer requests i'm going to give you my email address it's angelcare6 at yahoo.com and that's a-n-g-e-l-c-a-r-e -E. it's a number six at yahoo.com i am an ordained minister i will i pray for everybody every day so if you send me your prayer request i promise you i will pray for you and bring you before the father you can put your prayer requests in the comment box if you want other people to pray for you and i'll put the link to the book on the etsy site go get your book and i'll send you a free bracelet so that you'll have a gift from my heart to yours. Thank you so much for spending this time with me and I hope you have a beautiful, beautiful, blessed day today. You take care and I love you all. God bless.